Hi, this is Monterey's Cooking Pisto Style, and I'm John Pisto. Welcome. Today we're going to do something very nice because it's springtime, is in the air, and we're going to make one of my favorite dishes of all time, which is an appetizer, which is called bruschetta. Now, bruschetta is um, a very interesting dish. All sections of Italy serve it differently. Some do with different vegetables. The beauty of it is, is that you can use whatever you want on it. You can put, it can be vegetable oriented or it can be meat, it can even be fish. Okay, let me show you how to make it real simple. You're gonna have to have some fresh tomatoes, okay? The sweeter, the better, all right? And you're gonna need some nice, good, crusty French bread. And you're gonna need a grill or you can do it in your oven at home in your, uh, in your broiler. So what I'm going to do is cut these pieces like this. And what I'll do is just make a few. Now this bread is real fresh, so it's a little hard to cut. But just cut some nice pieces. You want these to be about a two or three, three biter. And you got to, like I said, you have to have something with a nice crust on it, okay? Now, next thing you do is you brush it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Now, if I was gonna put this in the oven, I'd put this on a sheet pan, but we got this little grill here that'll work just like a barbecue. And it's okay if it gets a little burnt because we want it to have that, that outdoor taste, you know? This is, I like to call this the original garlic bread because, uh, what we're going to do after is we're going to rub some raw garlic into this after it's cooked. And you're going to see the flavor this is going to have just by itself without putting anything else on it. So make sure when you use a brush, don't use, uh, of course, the brushes that you use for painting. These are special brushes. You buy these in the uh, um, restaurant supply houses or kitchen, sup kitchen uh, departments in your good department stores or whatever, kitchen stores. Okay, just brush that. Boy, this bread's real soft. That's okay, it's, it'll crisp up beautifully. Now, let's just, uh, you know, if you have an open fire, you know, barbecue, it's even better. Because it gets all that nice flavor from the smoke. Let's put this over here. Okay, next, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cut, Now I've already washed these tomatoes, okay? Make sure you wash your produce, folks. Very, very, very important. Take the uh, stem section out. Let's get the breadcrumbs off of here. Okay. And you got to make sure that your knife is very sharp. Now, can I talk about knives for a few minutes? When you buy any kind of kitchen utensil, okay, knives, pots and pans, buy the best because these are going to last you forever and you know most accidents that happen in the kitchen with knives are done on dull knives not sh not sharp knives because a dull knife you're always pushing and you're you know you're forcing it and what happens you end up slipping and you cut your hands get good equipment go to good good knife shops or the good department stores and ask for good knives and when they get dull take them to a sharpener have the guy resharpen them for you because it's very important to have decent equipment in a kitchen it makes uh, it makes the, the cooking, I mean, so much more fun. It's easier, um, you know, to s have to struggle with dull knives. And, and same with the pots, and this is hot. With pots and pans, I use stainless steel. It's real good. This will last a lifetime. In fact, this has got a lifetime guarantee. You pay a couple dollars for it, but you know what? It'll last you a lifetime, and then you can pass it on to your kids. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a, a rough dice. I don't want it to be too good. Let me use the big guy here. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Now I want to kind of, I don't want to make this perfect. I can chop nice, beautiful, symmetrical squares and everything, but I don't want that because otherwise it's going to, they'll roll off the bread. All right. So let's do this. Okay, we'll put that right in there. I don't know, this is almost like a salsa. I don't know, maybe. We can call this Italian salsa. Let me finish chopping these tomatoes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, you see, just chop up the tomatoes like this. Now we're gonna add the good stuff. 
okay? And what I like to do also is, uh, I'm gonna smash this just, just a little bit to make sure that we release a lot of the juice, all right? Next thing, black Kalamata olives, gotta have them. Don't use those other black olives. I mean, they're very good and, you know, the, uh, I don't know what are they, they call just black ripe olives, I guess. I mean, they're okay, but you know what? They don't have any flavor. These have got some tang to them. These are called a Kalamata olive. You can use a natural, they have a, uh, called an Italian natural olive, which is quite large and they, you know, they've got real flavor to them. I mean, you can cook with them. You could uh, even eat them with a piece of bread. I mean, it's delicious. A piece of cheese, a piece of tomato, glass of wine. You get yourself a peasant lunch. But it'll make you live to be 100. Okay, chop up some of the black olive. This is that Mediterranean diet, you know, everyone's talking about, folks. I'm showing you the secret of a Mediterranean diet. If you went to the doctor, he'd charge you $100 an hour for this kind of information. Okay, we got some black. Now, if you want to put some green, see these are the green olives. These have been cured in brine. Let me just show you how we do it. You got to smack them. Give them a good smack. Chop them up. Anchovies would be incredible in here. Okay, these are capers. Now, I'm fortunate to have a caper plant at my mom's house. And we pick them and we preserve them ourselves. And what they look like, we pack them in salt. What you're used to buying in the store is the ones that are packed in um, vinegar. But I understand now they're bringing them in from Italy also, packed in salt. Get the ones packed in salt if you can, because they're a lot, lot more flavorful. Okay? So what we do with that, I rinse the uh, salt off. See how pretty these look? Nice size, huh? Okay, just break them up. Break them up real good. Boy, it really, really releases a lot of nice, nice aroma. Okay, now we put the medicine in. You know, that's what I call medicine. Get a, you know, invest in a good garlic press. I've got about six of them. And uh, this one works as good as any of them. Notice I'm using the back of the knife and not the blade, because that'll make your knife probably get dull real quick. All right, one, two. Okay, this is called the garlic. Countdown. Three. Now you know raw garlic by itself will taste very hot. And I think that's what I want, some hot. That's four. Put a little double in there. Okay, let me check my bread here. Okay, bread is browning nicely. See that? See how nice that's browning? See? Isn't that beautiful? The original garlic bread. Okay, turn it over. So what do we have, about two pieces in here? Two pieces? I'll put another six then. I'm kidding, I'm counting. Okay. So everybody says, boy, you sure like garlic. Yep, I sure do. Okay. Like this. Give it a little bit more now. This is fresh basil. And you know, tomato and basil is a real natural complement to each other. And I get it and I roll it up like this, okay? And then cut it real, real fine. Okay. Let's get a little bit of olive oil. And we gotta put some salt in here. And, boy, it smells right. And let's give it a good shot of pepper. Okay. Keep an eye on your bread. This is a perfect, perfect first course. You know your people out in the patio or walking around. Okay, when we come back, we're going to put this dish together. Okay, that's done. Now let's structure our dish. Get the 
this out of the way. Oh, you know, I forgot. Let's add a little Italian Tabasco sauce. Okay, now you see this, I can turn this guy off now. Now let me show you the real, original garlic bread. Use tongs to pull these off. I, you know, I'm used to the heat, so. Okay, get a garlic clove like that. Cut it at an angle. And now rub it into the bread. Now this is what they do in France for the good fish soups and the in Italy too. And you just do this with good quality bread and good olive oil. And sprinkle a little cracked pepper on it. You could eat about two rows of this with a nice glass of wine or a cold beer. I tell you you're in heaven. You know, food doesn't have to be fancy to be good, folks. Just rub it in there good. The original garlic bread. Isn't that incredible? See that? And boy, boy, I wish you could smell this. See that? The garlic just dissolves right into that bread. The more you put on, the better it is. Put it in there good. Good for you. They're just finding this out now. We've known for hundreds of years that garlic's good for you. And now they're just finding it out now. Okay, now to make a bruschetta, all you do is you put a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. You see how easy that is? Now, can you tell this is gonna be good? I bet you can tell. You can taste the olive. You can taste the nice capers in there. The, the basil. The hot from the little Tabasco. I mean, you know what a good, good uh, appetizer this is? All right. If you want to decorate it with the little basil, you can. Okay, you don't have to. Maybe a couple extra olives in the middle. Like this. Okay, now you got one dish. Let's go right into the next one. All right. Next one's gonna be a nice pasta dish. And we're gonna be using some very simple ingredients that everyone has in their house. At least if you're Italian. <laughs> this is zucchini, all right? Nice fresh garden zucchini. And this is gonna be so simple, you're not gonna believe how simple this is. And this is a dish that works because we combine certain flavors that just, you know, flavor, you know, peanut butter and jelly and, you know, flavors that marry well together. Zucchini and onion, olive oil and garlic is such a natural combination I'll tell you, you'll see. I mean, it makes for a fantastic pasta dish. So inexpensive, you won't believe it. I mean, you know, we're just using a couple, couple zucchini. And uh, we're gonna do is do a fine dice. Now you see, if I had a dull knife, it would be very hard to do this because I'd be fighting it. Okay, so what you want to do is just dice these guys like this. Now get your pan, this is very important, get your pan very, 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 very hot. All right, and we add the olive oil. We're using very good quality olive oil because we want that flavor to come through. Okay, and then just dice them up. This is one weird, these look like cucumbers <laughs> instead of zucchini. I don't know why, but they have that look to them. Okay, just dice it like this. Now this, this whole lunch today that we're doing, or dinner I should say, is a garlic lover's dream. Because I'm gonna be using more garlic in this too. So make sure if you have people over, number one, they like garlic. Number two, they all eat it, otherwise you're gonna kill each other. 
not really extra everybody eats so okay see i want that i want this pan smoking and it is smoking okay turn it on now you see my i've got commercial burners here so they they pack a pretty good wall up here In it goes. Now what gives this flavor, what gives this dish so much flavor is the vegetables being cooked. Well done with a little crispiness on it. You have to have that to it, okay? It has to be cooked well done. Let me put the rest of this. That's going to give that that incredible, incredible flavor. And then we're going to squeeze some fresh garlic into it. And when we come back, this should be just about right. Okay, our pasta's in. Cook according to directions. Make sure, don't know, do not overcook your pasta. Now, you see how this zucchini is? You gotta get it brown. It's got to be brown. Very, very, very important. See how nice and brown that is? Boy, I wish you could smell that flavor. Now, I'm going to also do, this is on low. We're gonna put in the raw garlic. Okay, one. So this is gonna be about enough for Two people, so we'll put about three, four garlic cloves in there. Okay, that, I mean, we're talking good. Now let me show you what I'm going to do. Now I've turned that off. Okay, pasta is just about ready to go. Let's get our dish ready. Now I've turned this off. And you what we're going to do here. Now as this pasta is cooked, I'm going to drain it right here and I'm going to go right into the pan. Okay, the, the gas is off underneath here. Okay, and this one's off. Okay, I don't want you to put this in a colander because some of this water from the pasta is going to be incorporated into the juice and into the sauce, I should say. All right. Now you toss that together. And I put, look, a, ta a tablespoon of butter. Okay, a tablespoon of sweet butter. Okay, now you mix it. Boy, does this smell good. Smell the garlic, mm, the zucchini, the browned onions. This is one to fix for your mother-in-law, folks. She's going to love this one. Look at that. Put it right on the plate. Mm, mm. This is one of my favorite pasta dishes of all time. Let me put it all in here. Okay. Okay, done. This is enough for one Italian, I'll guarantee you. If Italians eat this, they, they can knock this dish out by themselves. Now this one, let's give that a taste. Mmm. All these flavors are coming out. Incredible food. Taste a little wine. Well, I'm going to have lunch now until I see you next time. Okay, bye.